So now we're going to learn about creating websites. I'm going to show you how to create a website. And, uh, and we're working out of a GitHub repo. It goes to 11. This is my GitHub account. And we're working in the repo HTML CSS Bootcamp so you can find our code. And uh, you should also follow me on Twitter because uh, the more people that follow me on Twitter, the more goodness flows between me and cool people in the world because you're one of them. And then the last thing is you should check out my company, this website I'm building with some friends, Greater Commons, helps people find part-time and full-time work, and uh, it's totally cool. So check it out, Greater Commons. You, you learn a skill and then get a job. Nice stuff. All right, so the next deal is uh, creating a surfer page. We're going to create this page right here. That page. Nice. I like it. And so the game plan for this is uh, we have body back here, which is blue, so we'll make our body blue. And then we have a container, which background color on that is going to be green. And it's going to only occupy a certain width, and it's going to be centered. So, so far we know margin zero auto can center something, a uh, block level element. So we're going to center that container with margin zero auto. And then we're going to put an image here, and we'll use some CSS. We'll put a border around it, and then we'll use some CSS border radius to round that, right? And, uh, and then we'll just have some headings and some lorem ipsum and style the colors. So how many people, you, you kind of get that when I say that game plan, you tracked me, you followed me, let me see your hands. All right, how many people that was like, I was talking Greek? No? Cool. So let's, uh, let's create it. And I'm going to create a new page here, and we'll call it 08. And you can see the place where I am in the directory, 0010, 09 Spring, 09 Homework, 07 right now. But in a second, we're going to be in 08 and close this. Nice. And, uh, and just bring that up. There's my body. And then here, I'm just going to split that vertically so I have my CSS over on the right. And so that's where I'm starting. And we're not going to do Flexbox on this one. You know, we totally could do it, but uh, we'll try the margin zero auto way, and then once we're done with the margin zero auto way, I'll show you the flexbox way. And so, first thing I'm going to do is my body, I'm just going to do background color blue. And launch this page. Make sure I'm recording 242. Launch this page, background color blue. So, it's a little bit of, not quite as bright of a blue. So I could search for a different blue and maybe go with Dodger blue. That's a little bit better. And now we need some sort of a container. So I'll just do a div. And that div, I want it to have a certain width. So the width, and uh, I could use a percentage here. And what percentage would you say this is of the page? The green part. Okay, I was thinking 50, we'll go with that, 50%. And then background color on that is green. And inside that div, we're going to have an image. And so now we need a source for that image. So I'm going to go surfer, or I'll do surfing. Woman in 90s crowned silver surfer 2017. She looks awesome for being in her 90s. Where's she surf? I want to see her riding away. Surfing. And we will go to Tools, Usage Rights, Labeled for Reuse. And we'll find an image. This looks pretty thrilling. The dog's pretty cool. Go with the dog. Save image as. And surfing dog. Documents. HTML, CSS. Zero, zero, temp. Spring. Homework. 08. So I should now have a source surfing dog. And alt text is like, you know, if the image wasn't there, it's what would show it. Help screen readers. I'm just going to leave it out for now. And then uh, for that image, this will select it. 
border, uh, 10 picks, grooved. I say grooved, but it's groove, groove, orange, red. And uh, border radius, like maybe 35 pixels, um, is, is, uh, is this a good, well, let's just see it work, and then I'll ask you the question. That is a huge image. Dear Lord, what can I do to fix this problem? So maybe just width. What kind of measurement would I want to use here? Thirty percent. Y percent. Yeah. So we wanted a percent of its parent because percent looks up to its parent. I want to be a percent of my parent, and that's probably like seventy-five percent of that, right? So I do seventy-five percent. And we can look that up, MDN percent CSS. Units of measurement, okay, is what we're looking for. And uh, MDN CSS units of measurement. Length, line height, font size, we'll come here, length. The length CSS data type denotes distance measurements. It is a number immediately followed by... So it's a data type. Length is a data type. It's a number immediately followed by a length unit. Pixels, M, picos, inches, millimeters. Like for any CSS dimension, there is no space between the unit literal. The unit literal would be PX, and the number would be like 10 PX or something, right? The length unit is optional after the number zero. Many CSS properties take length values such as width, margin, padding, right? So width. Right, width 20 pixels or 20 percent. For some properties, use negative lengths in a syntax is a syntax error, but for some properties, negative lengths are allowed. Please note that although percentage values are also CSS dimensions and are accepted by some CSS properties that accept length values, they are not themselves length values. Okay, well, we could go read about percentage. Percentage data type represents a percentage value. Many CSS properties can take percentage values, often to define sizes in terms of parent objects. Define size in terms of your parent object. I want to be 75% of the width of my parent. So that's pretty cool, right? Like you're seeing how to read the documentation. You always go to MDN. You've learned about the length data type and the percentage data type, and these are data types. So here that's 75%. Let's take a look, see if that fixed it. That looks a lot better, but my rounding needs to be more. So maybe I'll change this to 50%. That's better. And uh, maybe I'll change, uh, uh, now I want to center that, right? Margin zero auto, margin zero top and bottom, auto left and right, make the left and right equal. That's for my image, didn't do anything. Let's try margin zero auto up here and see what happens. Margin zero auto. Okay, that worked. Now how do I get that to margin zero auto into the center? Why is that why did the div margin zero auto into the center and the image didn't? Because the image is an inline element, right? So it's not taking up an entire row by itself. So we can make it take up an entire row. Display inline block, display block. Now it's, now it's centered. Did you all catch that? 
Y'all catch that? So, so far, that's what our page is looking like. Looks like that's a little big. Let's bring this down to 20. Let's bring this down to 55. That looks a little better, right? And the green needs to be more of a yellowish green. And this, on our blue, looks about right. But let's make that green like a light green. Kind of close. It's like a aquamarine. Go light sea green. Too light. Green yellow. Too yellow. Close enough. All right, so the next thing we need to add is uh, just some headings. So we could have a heading and heading one, and we could have a paragraph, lorem. And we can just duplicate that a couple of times. And we could say this is heading two, this is heading three, this is heading four. Oh, what happened? I took it outside my div. So take this and put it in my div. And take out this font size. Pretty good, right? Yeah, right? Some of the padding's wacky. So I want to reset that padding. I can include my CSS reset, which was one of the things in the instructions. So I'm just going to go get the McLeod CSS reset from right here, CSS resets, McLeod re reset, CSS, copy that. Copy that, drop it right here. And then I can link to this. Does it matter if I do it here or here? Does the order matter? Yes. Where do I want it? This one or this one? How many people say this one? Raise your hand. How many people say this one? Raise your hand. Is this one? Because you, your CSS gets evaluated in the order in which it's executed. Code is read from top to bottom. And so it hits the McLeod reset, zeroes everything out, and then we build up our CSS in the next one. Okay, so we just zeroed out all of our CSS. So now we could go look at this. Everything got zeroed out. See that, right? Remember it was like this before? Zeroed out all of the formatting. And, uh, and now I could start formatting that. So I could say H1 font size. 32 pixels and uh, margin and I could do like top of 20 pixels, right of nothing, left of nothing, right bottom of uh, you know 10 pixels and uh, so top top is 20, right is 0, bottom is 10 and left is 0. And bottom, I think I might just bring down to zero too. And then I could do my pair, my font size for the whole deal. HTML font size twenty four pixels.
cool, right? And maybe I want the Roboto font because Roboto is super cool. You ready to learn something new? Check it out. You ready? Google Fonts. Come to Google Fonts. Find the fonts you like. Different ways to find fonts. I just want sans serif, which are good for the web. And then I could sort them by trending or the most popular. In both cases, Roboto is the one. So I add this, select it. And then I come over here and I click on it. And here is uh, the link for bringing in that font. So I drop it in here before I use it. I guess it doesn't matter on this one. But that's basically saying, go get the Roboto font. And now I could use that in my code, font family Roboto sans serif. So up here I could say font family Roboto sans serif. Now you ready to see something beautiful? This is Roboto. So this was my code before. This is my code now, right? Change the font. And you could search this to find the most popular fonts. These are the most popular fonts. And there's a reason they're popular. And people like that, which is familiar. And so when they see that, they're going to like that. Maybe I'd go with Roboto thin on that, but that's OK. So that's pretty much the page. This one has more text, and we changed the colors of heading, header one, header two. So change these colors, how would you do that? What if we want heading one to be blue? See Alex. What if we want heading one to be blue? How do we select it? Heading one is an H1, right? So we could uh, div greater than, and we just want the first one to be blue. Is greater than going to select the first one, or what? What's greater than going to select? I'm on the wrong page. I'm going to select them all, right? All children. What's this one going to select? Tilde. Looks like an S. It's going to select siblings. Is that going to do anything for us here? No. All right? We don't have siblings. We have children. What would this one select? First sibling, right? So we have div H1 which will select all of them. Any H1 that's under div, this will select them only if they're immediate children. Okay. But we might also say div H1 first child. Just looking to see if first child. Nope, that didn't do it. Yeah, first child, that's kind of interesting. Try this. H1, first child. Well, that, that might do it. Let's do uh, just an ID. There we go. So you can do that with the rest of them. How did first child work? So let's say we were down here. OL LI10. And notice the syntax there, greater than sign, means make those under the OL, kind of like the greater than in the CSS selectors means select anything that's under an OL.
And uh, let's do li first child. Color. Made that one red. It's kind of hard to see on the blue. Make it white. We can put it in our div. So I was just wondering why the li there, li is the first child. And uh, h1 here, what would qualify that as the first child? So our div, image of the first child, that's the second child. Let's do. Uh, H1, and this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'll do nth child, nth child, 4, color, I'll do white. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's see if it changes heading 2. Hey, that one did it. So I was just choosing the wrong thing. We just figure out what child it is, and it made it. That's nice. I was thinking maybe it would distinguish. Hey, if you're an H1 and you're the first H1, but it's uh, you have to figure out what order it is with all the other stuff. One, two, three, four. You see that? Isn't that cool? The nth child. Now, how many people want to work on creating this page? All right. And when you're done with that, we'll show you how to do it with Flexbox.